In this video, we're going to finish our Feed Aspen shooter game for Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com, and in the last video, we converted our Feed Aspen game to a shooter game where Aspen shoots bones up into the game field. In this video, we want to finish up that game and make it to where when the bones collide with the food, it destroys the food and we score. We also want to change it to where if we miss the food, we lose a life. So this should be fairly straightforward, should just take a few minutes. So let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pygame series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So before we get into this, I want to make a very quick change. If you remember back from our original Feed Aspen game, we have this red food and blue food. In fact, if we head over to our terminal and run this guy again real quick, you remember we have this one red food. And in the old game, Aspen tried to eat the red food and dodge the blue food. So that's not really what we care about in this video. So I'm going to take that red food out and replace it with a blue food. So let's just do that real quick. And this is just the code that we were working on in the last video. I'm calling it Aspen underscore shoot dot pi. Let's come down here and here we have our food type. Zero is blue and one is red. And right here, this whole line, we're creating one red food. So I'm just going to comment this out. Here we've got our for loop where it's putting seven blue foods on the screen. Well, instead of seven, I want to put eight now. Let's see. We've got a reset function as well. So we need to find that. And here it is, the game over function. Right, so here we're going to create another red food if the game is over and restarted. So again, let's change this to eight. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. Come back over here, aspen shoot.py. And okay, we've got one, two, oh, it's hard to tell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that looks like eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight blue foods. So, all right, that looks good. You'll notice as we shoot these things and they go off the screen, they just kind of keep on going up forever. And we really don't want that. We only want them to kind of go up to this blue line here, right? So let's fix that. Let's head over to our Aspen bone group. And here we have an update function. And this is where we're setting the velocity and moving it up by a rect Y uh, at the velocity of here 10, right? So let's also delete the bone when it reaches the top of the blue box. So we can run an if statement. We can say if the self dot rect dot top, which is the top of the bone, is less than 100, then what do we want to do? Well, let's self dot kill that thing. Also, we might want to say, hey, if we miss, we die, we lose a life, right? So also lose a life. To do that, we'll just call our r underscore game dot lives, and then we'll set that equal to minus one. And we can also play, we've got that sound whenever Aspen used to collide with the food, it was like, oh, or something like that. We could play that, that sound if we want. That's just r underscore game dot die underscore sound dot play. And we're calling our game because when we sort of instantiated our game, right? We called that our game. That's going to create a game function. So if we want to access things in the game class, right? Or I should say game class, Did I say the game function. Anyway, game class, uh, for instance, the score and the lives, we can just outside of this class reference our game dot lives, for instance, our game dot score, our game dot uh, score sound or die sound or whatever, right? So that's what we do there. So come back down here and take a look at this. And here, let's comment uh, die sound. <laughs> All right. So let's save this and run it, see if that worked. And the reason why we put it at 100 is because, well, actually, let's look at this real quick. Uh, when we drew this thing, uh, we've got this draw function here. We set it at 100, right? So that's why we used 100. So, all right bring this guy back. And if we fire, okay, so we lost a life. I don't know if you could hear that or not because my speaker's volume is down, but uh, two, one, zero. Oh, you lose a life. That seems to work. We can still fire. We probably want to fix that. We'll do that in a bit. 
Now let's deal with the collisions. So let's head back up to our game class. And we've already got a function, a method in here for collisions from our old game right here, right? But I'm going to comment all of this out down here. All right, because we want to do this differently. So what we want to do is do a group collide, right? We've done this way back at the beginning of the playlist. So let's go if pygame dot sprite dot, let me move this up a little bit so it's easier to read. There we go, dot group collide. Now, what do we want to collide? Well, we want to collide the self dot bone group and we want to collide the self dot food group. And when each of those collide, do we want them both to disappear? Yes, we do. So that's true and true. So true, we want the bone group to disappear and true, we want the food group to disappear. So, okay, so if that is the case, what do we wanna happen? We want to increase the score because, you know, that's a score hitting the food. So that's just gonna be self.score plus equals one. Now, why can we do self.score instead of r underscore game.score like we did earlier? Well, because we're in this function right now, right? We're in our game function, so we can access all of the stuff in our game function, so we don't have to call it externally like we did earlier. Uh, we also want to maybe play score sound, whatever that is. And that's just self.score sound.play. Okay, now this self.bone group, if we come up here to our game class, we don't have that inherited in here, passed in there, right? So we need to pass in the bone underscore group, and then we need to sort of instantiate it here. Let's go self.bone underscore group, and set that equal to bone underscore group. And then we also need to pass in that bone group when we call our game class way down here. So let's go find that. So here's our game. We're passing in Aspen. We're passing in the food group. We also need to pass in the bone group. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how that looks. So we've got this. Oh, there we go. Disappeared. Disappeared. Oh, we got him. Boom. boom. And this is not as easy as it looks. Okay, so we got score equals seven because earlier we only had seven blue and to determine if you win or not was a seven. So we need to change that real quick. So let's see, let's come back here to, let's see, where would that be? Up here at the top probably. Uh, okay, right here. So this is gonna be our game class. We've just got this thing that says if self.score equals seven. So let's change that to eight then it's going to put everything up on the screen. So, okay, let's give that a try. Head back over here, run the skin. So, <laughs> seven and eight. All right, you win, press enter to play again. It's not playing the sound when we win. Maybe we want to change that. All right, but now we can still fire after the game is over. And if we hit enter, everything resets. So that's good. So let's run some logic to see if when we die, when the game is over, we can keep ourselves from firing. So uh, let's see, let's come down here to our, where's our loop at, our game loop. Here is where we're firing, right? Okay, so here we could just run some logic here and we can go if r underscore game dot lives, is greater than zero, we haven't died, right? In that case, we're gonna tab all this over. That looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. Let's spell live, uh, our game dot lives. There we go. All right, now we run this guy. And four lives, three lives, two lives. All right, you lose. I'm hitting space bar. It's not letting me fire anymore. If I hit enter to restart the game, I can still do that. Okay, that looks good. Now we're pretty much done here. If you wanted to continue on instead of pressing enter to play again, maybe you could go to round two 
and then maybe make the velocity of the food bounce around quicker so it's harder to hit. I'll leave that to you. Relatively trivial and you should be able to figure that out on your own after going through all of these tutorials. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. So fairly easy to create a little shooter game. And you think about this, we're using Aspen and food, but this could very easily be like a space invader game where the, you know, enemy alien ships are at the top and they're coming down and you have to shoot them. And as you do, you know, they disappear. Same exact concept, right? Maybe I'll leave that to you to try and figure out how to sort of modify this to make it into a Space Invaders type game. We could do it with Feed Aspen and just have all the food at the top, you know, coming down in a block and slowly moving down the screen as Space Invaders does. Ah, maybe we'll do that later. But uh, pretty simple and uh, kind of fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out Kodomi.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from Kodomi.com, and I'll see you in the next video.